I couldn't help myself. Last video, I said I was going to start porting Castle Wars over to Godot. I also said I was going to try and finish up some of my Unity projects first, but I may or may not have been having a little too much fun working in Godot, so I just started the port. Here's how far I got in a week. So the main menu looks pretty much the same. We have buttons for online games, local games, some stuff that won't be set up for a while, and a quit button, which quits the game. I think it's worth starting by talking about local games. I spent a few days getting a Steam Lobby working, but everything was dependent on the Steam network, and thus, it wasn't very modular of me. Plus, like, what would happen if I wanted to play a LAN game? I Do I need to connect to Steam so I could play LAN? No. I nuked that lobby implementation, and I found an example lobby script on the high-level multiplayer page of the Godot documentation. It's crazy that they just leave this there, and there's not really an indication that it exists. So it, it didn't have everything that I wanted, but it did have this conception of client information, which I want to take and expand on a little bit. I took that script and I rigged up a quick host and join menu. And then in the client info, I added a field for the number of players on each client, as well as a team string, which we're going to get back to later. And then from this, I started building the lobby menu. We can list everyone's names, but we need some set of rules to actually differentiate players and display more complex information about the game. So we're gonna need a list of settings? Yeah. I wrote a script which holds a multi-dimensional dictionary of values and it synchronizes it across all of the clients. We can pull in a default settings dictionary from a JSON file or even dump the current settings to a JSON file. This multi-dimensional dictionary holds tables of game settings objects. Each one of these objects consists of a key, a display name, a default index, a selected index, and a list of option strings. This way we can encode booleans into the strings on and off, or we can encode numerical values into just a set of numbers. I use these game settings objects to automatically generate a settings menu for the host to edit, as well as generate panels for the non-host clients to just view the settings. I added a signal which gets emitted when the dictionary is updated so that the settings can update in real time for all of the clients. Right now, there's not that much here. With the development of the game, this is just gonna expand really quickly over time. I also added a similar synchronizing dictionary system for storing game info. So stuff like the lobby name, the game mode, and the number of players, since that can be different than the number of connected clients. Now that we have some settings that we can use to arrange our lobby menu with, we can iterate over each client and generate player cards for each of their local players. These player cards show the usernames, avatars, local indexes, and a crown if the player is the host. These player cards are then organized by team. If you click on a player card, you can pull them up. There is the ability to see profiles, but that's only for online games. So for offline games, which is what we're looking at right now, there's no profile to pull up. There is also the option to kick players if you're the host. Also in this lobby menu, I gave the players each the ability to set their team, which updates that client's team string. So the team string is just gonna hold the team values for each of the up to four possible local players. This can be done by either clicking a button if you're on a mouse and a keyboard, or if you're on a controller, pressing a direction on the D-pad. You can't join teams that aren't available. And if you're on a team that got removed because the setting changed, you'll automatically get pushed to a team which is available. All right, so now we have a lobby system that can work without needing a third-party network like Steam. So let's actually get some gameplay working. So I added a field into the game info dictionary, which is called state, and this is gonna store what state our lobby is in. Lobby may not be the right term there, game maybe. We can listen for changes in state and then change things with our game accordingly. So I set up four states for the lobby. There is in lobby, loading game, in game, and loading lobby. So it's a cycle. Since the game info and settings dictionaries are synced over the network, we can just change the state to loading game and the game will start in sync on all of the clients. I added a loading screen, which waits until all of the clients are done loading a map and then removes itself to reveal the world. When the loading screen is removed, the state then transitions to in game. This is when each client sets up split screen viewports for each of its own players. The host will then spawn players for each client since we actually know how many local players are on each client when they join the lobby. Also, just as a side note, because we know how many players are on each client, the code is so much cleaner for spawning additional players. You just run the same thing three times rather than having to 
spawn the first one and then have that first one tell the server hey there's more of us it's so much better when the players spawn in they're named with some important information so i cram in the network authority the local player id and the team identifier into each player's name that way we can set up their network authority we can also attach a local controller and a split screen viewport to them and later we can indicate what team they're on with that team identifier as far as the character controller goes it is just straight up ripped from the last video, exactly. I literally just copy pasted it and moved it over. That was it. Unfortunately, in this video, it's mostly just necessary groundwork so that we can actually get into a playable state over the network. I didn't really have time to beef up the character controller. All right, so now we have a fully working lobby system with a lobby cycle. So the whole game can take place and then we can return to the lobby. So I think it's time that we tackle Steam support. This is something that quite a few people had questions about after the last video. I am using both the Godot Steam add-on and the Espresso Bits Steam Multiplayer Peer add-on. I chose the add-on versions because I don't really wanna have to compile my own engine every time there's an update. And also, I tend to do some of my development on a Mac. And recently, like literally in this past week, they updated everything to Mac OS 15, S Sonoma? It doesn't really matter. When they updated the Mac OS, they completely removed the ability to run unsigned applications. A normal app that you'd run on the computer has to be signed. And Godot, the vanilla version of Godot is signed, but Godot Steam is is not signed. I'm using add-ons so that I can still use the vanilla version of Godot so it can run on my Mac. So I use Godot Steam for lobbies, Steam callbacks, and pulling information from Steam's database. And then I use the multiplayer peer as an almost drop-in replacement for the built-in Enet multiplayer peer. One warning though, because I did do some of the development on the Mac, right now the Steam multiplayer peer add-on is bugged on Mac OS. If you try and create a host, it will return error code 20. And if you try and create a client, it'll return error code 25. I don't know what those mean, but you could probably look them up. I did not feel like trying to fix that myself. So I just co-opted my brother's desktop, which is right there and it runs Windows so that I could test Steam functionality. I built a lobby browser using Godot Steam callbacks. It filters out lobbies with no name. And I also built a quick menu, which lets you set up and host your own lobby. Once you've entered a lobby, I connect everyone's Steam multiplayer peers using the lobby ID, which we can then translate to a host Steam ID. By the way, the Steam multiplayer peer uses Steam user IDs instead of IP addresses to connect players. I wrote my network manager in such a way that I can just swap out a set of Enet functions for a set of Steam functions, so the lobby can just automatically pull in Steam usernames and avatars. I also hook into the settings and game info update signals so that the host can parody our lobby information from our own lobby setup to the Steam Lobby metadata. That way the lobby info can be filtered in the lobby browser. I also disable lobby joining when we're not in the in lobby state so that you can't join mid game. The only things I really have are a couple of bugs. If you kick a Steam player as the host of the lobby, your client crashes. It doesn't really give me any information as to why. If you have a similar setup to this and you ran into this issue, I'd love to know how you solved it. And likewise, if you leave a Steam Lobby just the normal way, then your client crashes. <laughs> Again, no indication why. It's very interesting that both of these have to do with players disconnecting. So maybe I got to look at my own implementation. This might be my fault. I'm not going to pin this on the add-ons. Also, for those of you wondering, the lag over the Steam network is really not that bad. It's, it's aggressively tolerable. And you're watching footage of it. With all that said, I'm really glad that Godot lets me work really, really quickly. The idea to implementation time is so low. I threw all this together in my free time over the last week. Honestly, like heart to heart, moment to moment, man to whoever's behind the camera. Um, would you want to see a tutorial about any of this? If there's any part of this video that you would want me to make a tutorial on, please put that in the comments. There is always part of me that wants to jam pack these videos full of code so that People who do want to do a similar thing can just see the code, see how I did it, but at the same time, like this is unfortunately supposed to be kind of entertaining and some people don't really like code, they think it's boring. But in general, would a tutorial on the lobby system be of interest to you? Maybe the, the settings menu, the modular network manager, or even like the menu system, which I didn't talk about at all. The only catch would be that my game dev pipeline and video pipeline is pretty full at the moment. I went over 
a lot of that in the last video. This video was not even in the pipeline. I just shoved it in because I wanted to do it. So if I do make tutorials, they probably won't come out anytime soon. With that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm going to go spend time working on my knockback arena shooter, which if you aren't familiar with, I highly suggest that you check out this video. I'll see you in a bit. Peace.